Clara, what drew you to the neurosciences? I've been interested and motivated by exploration and discovery you know, my entire life. Our scientists have been to space and they've been to the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean floor and the brain is another frontier. Uh, we know so little about the brain. I think the brain is probably the most complex structure in the universe. And not only does it control most of our bodily functions, but it also gives rise to you know, the way we think, the way we feel, the way we make decisions, you know, our emotional life. So why would we not want to know everything, you know, that's possible ab about the human brain? So Claire, you've been to many academic institutions involved in neuroscience research. What do you see as the unique advantages that Stanford brings to bear in the neurosciences? What can we do here that's actually difficult to do in other places? I think Stanford is really at the forefront of a lot of disciplines that are critical to brain discovery. And you know, there are a few things in particular that, that I can point out. You know, number one, um, you know, disciplinary excellence in particularly physics, engineering, computer science, statistics, psychology, um, medicine. And number two, we have a campus where these, these uh, disciplines and the School of Medicine are really in close proximity. And third, Stanford you know, already has a very established culture of um, interdisciplinary collaboration. So I think those three things make Stanford you know, a very special place to do brain research. What kind of future impacts, very tangible, do you hope that we can achieve in the neurosciences at Stanford? Naturally, I hope that research undertaken at Stanford will lead to therapies, cures, and treatments that impact millions of people. Um, but specifically, you know, I'm very interested in early detection of neurodegenerative diseases. And I would love to be able to define these diseases based on biological signs like brain changes as opposed to, you know, by symptoms. Um, be great to be able to identify these diseases before symptoms appear. and close to my interests, you know, I'd really love to be able to halt the progression of these diseases instead of treating symptoms. So as you know, the primary mission of the Institute is research, and it's what we focused on in our first five years, but an equally important mission is education and figuring out how to educate the next generation of neuroscientists. And I'd be interested in your thoughts on that. Well, I think it's very important, and as an educational institution, I think it should be front and center of, of, of what we're trying to do with the Institute. For me, you know, the scientist of the future is one who really is comfortable uh, working with other disciplines. They understand all the new tools and technologies that they have available to them, and they collaborate very effectively. Um, to me, I think we should be training our postdocs and students to, uh, to feel comfortable taking high-risk, high-reward research projects. 10 to 20 years from now, what would you like the legacy of this institute to be? Well, of course, you know, I hope that Stanford has had its hand in transformative breakthroughs that have led to cures and therapies you know, that basically prolong our lives and make them more fulfilling and productive. Um, but, you know, that aside, you know, I hope that we're known for breakthrough discoveries, collaboration, innovation, use of technology, um, you know, a proactive stance on, on translation into practical applications. And I really also hope that we're known as a great place for training future scientists of the world. Bill, what, what about you? What would you like the legacy of the Institute to be in 10 to 20 years? That's a great question. You've heard me say, I think, that less than 1% of what there is to know about the brain is currently known. And one of the implications of that is that we don't even know how to think about the brain in certain ways. There are vistas to open up that we don't even know about yet, how it basically functions. And I would like the legacy of this institute to be that we put our shoulder to that wheel and we really made a difference. Clara, thank you so much for joining us here this afternoon. Thank you for your vision and for your passion and for your support for this institute enabling us to do great research and make an impact on our society and on the lives of real people. Thank you. My pleasure.